we are now going to talk about how we find square roots. Now a square root is the opposite of a square. If I square 5 to get 25, then I could square root 25 to get back to the 5. The problem is that notice that both 5 squared and negative 5 squared provide a 25. In fact, both 5 and negative 5 are said to be roots of 25, specifically square roots of 25. In other words, a number b is a square root of a if and only if b squared equals a. Now it's also important to recognize that we have a radical symbol. This symbol right here tells us that we're going to take a root, in this case a square root, and we put the number here that tells us what type of root it is, and if it's unseen, then it's a square root. Just like we know that x is really x to the first, we don't have to write that one. It's the same idea, but here we assume there's a 2. Now it's also important to realize that this returns what we call the principal square root, which is always, by definition, the positive one. So if I were to write the square root of 25, I would expect to see 5, the positive one, back. If I wanted the negative one, then all I have to do is throw a negative in front, not inside, in front of, and that would then give me negative 5. You evaluate the square root first and then attach the negative following normal order of operations. Now we want to show a few examples, so we'll start with some easy ones. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 100 is 10, because in both cases, 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. And notice I'm giving the positive one, because I'm asking for the principal square root. There's no negative sign in front. If I wanted to see the negative square root of 225, well, this one's a little bit harder, but let's see if we can break 225 down a little bit. So if we take 225 and divide it by 5, and then divide that by 5, notice that's 25 that we pulled out, at least behind 9. Well, that's square rooted to 5, and that square roots to 3, so this looks to me like it's the, the square root of 225 is 15, but don't lose that sign. We want a negative 15. And checking on our calculator, 15 negative times 15 negative is positive 225. So we have correctly found it. Notice that we could also do this with fractions. If I have the square root of 49 over 4, then I can treat them separately. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 4 is 2, and notice if I check that, 7 over 2 quantity squared is 7 squared, or 49, and 2 squared, or 4. And we have our answer, so we've checked all of these. We could also look at decimals. Now there's a trick to decimals. Count the number of decimal places after the decimal point. There's two. That means if it is a perfect square, it's only going to have one, half the number goes here. Then we ignore the decimal and just pretend we had the 36. Square root of 36 is 6. Add the 0 to the front and we have our answer. And notice the 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. 6 times 6 is 36 and then move 1 to decimal places. And we're back where we started. Now back to the calculator. You'll notice on the built-in calculator this Y to the X button. If we were to hit this and then hit 2, for the square root and equals, we'd get 15. So you can use this button on your calculator to get the square root. One final thing, notice what happens if I try and take the square root of negative 9 on the calculator. It says it's an invalid input. Remember that the result of a square has to be positive. It can't be negative. So if we have the square root of a negative number, then we will say not a real number. And we'll move on. We'll come back to these later on in the chapter.